It's Christopher Columbus versus cancel culture on our college campuses, and we're taking a look at some of the latest examples of how American universities are trying to get rid of Columbus Day for good. Plus, a professor is now facing punishment after trying to implement his own mask mandate in a classroom. And our college campuses are slowly becoming surveillance states. We'll take a look at how our higher education institutions are getting away with this. I'm Ophelia Jacobson, and this is the Campus Countdown. Columbus Day was this past Monday, October 11th, and for years, Campus Reform has been covering the trend of college campuses replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. This is fueled by concerns of honoring colonialism and genocide, which means that universities are opting for scrapping remembrance of the explorer altogether. Let's take a look at a few examples. University of Michigan history and American culture professor Gregory Dowd is one of the many academics who assert that the country as a whole needs to end Columbus Day recognition completely in favor of Indigenous Peoples Day. His view was promoted by the university ahead of the holiday this year. Dowd reasons that early supporters of a holiday honoring Columbus, quote, sailed with currents of white supremacism that were crusting in the United States. Quote, the advocates of Columbus, like most American citizens, did not reflect on the lives, contributions, and experiences of Native Americans, Dowd explains. Quote, these were not taken seriously if taken at all. In celebrating Columbus's so-called discovery, they were overlooking or worse, supporting his violent efforts at conquest. Support for Indigenous Peoples Day is indeed growing, especially on college campuses. Syracuse University is among a growing number of universities that regularly honor Indigenous Peoples Day. The university started recognizing the new replacement holiday in 2016 and now hosts annual celebrations of Indigenous culture on Columbus Day. The University of Wyoming also hosted an Indigenous Peoples Day celebration in lieu of Columbus Day this year. The event called Indigenous Peoples Day Every Day was hosted on Monday, October 11th. The University of Oregon also celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day with events held by the Museum of Natural and Cultural History. The event celebrated and encompassed 14,000 years of history from the past to present. This is yet another attempt to rewrite American history, and we are doing the next generation of Americans ultimately a disservice by downplaying the importance of Christopher Columbus. And I don't know about you, but it feels like for me this year, people have completely forgotten about Columbus Day because universities and leftist politicians are really trying to replace that day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Look, I'm not saying Columbus was a perfect man. No one is. But the truth is, we wouldn't be the country we are today without Christopher Columbus. The pace at which our education system has removed or revised history has been staggering. First, it started with removing American exceptionalism altogether in the classroom, which led students to be more susceptible to the revisionist history that they were being taught. You know, that America is an evil nation that was founded on racism and genocide. Now the shift is becoming removing history altogether that is offensive or not in line with the left's SJW narrative. Look, people aren't going to protect what they don't understand. The reason why we see so many young people trying to tear down our institutions or dismantle our founding principles is that they don't understand our country's history. Pride in America only comes when people understand where they come from and what their founding principles are. Moving on to our second top story of the week, a professor is now being penalized after trying to implement his own in-classroom mask mandate. Here to tell us more about that story is campus reform correspondent Meredith Minto. Thanks for having me on, Ophelia. At the University of Northern Iowa, they were not planning on instating a mask mandate for this academic school year, but one professor wanted to take matters into his own hands. Professor Steve O'Kane implemented a mask mandate for his classes, and now he's facing punishment. In May, the Board of Regents told college campuses that they would not be instating a mask mandate and that students and faculty should resume pre-pandemic responsibilities, and if needed, a remote option could be available. Professor O'Kane told state legislatures when talking about the mass mandate that they should please put politics aside and put our lives and health first. O'Kane also told students that if they didn't show up to class in a mask, he would be deducting daily lab points from their overall grade. These students had no personal choice in the matter. After the administration found out, O'Kane was released from teaching his in-person classes and told to take a course on professional responsibilities. Although this professor got in trouble, other professors are feeling the same way across the country. In August of 2021, Campus Reform reported on a group of professors that were planning a protest at Clemson University, calling on the administration to implement a mask mandate. 
Clemson, the night before the planned protest, implemented a mask mandate just hours after the Supreme Court of South Carolina ruled that institutions of higher education could implement mask mandates. In an email obtained by Campus Reform, Clemson was now requiring students and faculty to wear masks inside academic buildings, classrooms, and dormitories unless eating or drinking. This is just another example of how professors are taking matters into their own hands and blatantly disregarding university policy on masks in the name of personal safety. The left has been telling Americans to trust the experts, but when the experts don't go for their personal agendas, that's when protests begin to start. Thanks, Meredith. And for our top story of the week, universities are now giving their students tools to report on COVID violations and bias incidents. We've got the latest examples of how our higher education institutions are becoming campuses of surveillance. Let's take a look at a few examples. Michigan State University provides students with reporting system to achieve what the school describes as a, quote, safe and supportive environment for its community members. The school's culturally inclusive college sharing system, or CIC, is an online submission form which allows the university to track and respond to behaviors and situations that work to support or detract from its goals of a safe and supportive environment. The form tells students that some protected speech can still warrant a report. Anything intended to, quote, intimidate, demean, mock, degrade, marginalize, or threaten their identities, real or perceived, is worth notifying the university about. Actions need not be intended to harm and can do as little as promote a, quote, negative, hostile, or unwelcoming environment for the target. Schools from Sacramento State to Harvard University also sponsor their own bias reporting. Now with COVID, multiple schools have also developed systems to track their students' COVID symptoms. One of those schools is the University of Cincinnati. Until the fall 2021 semester, UC students were required to conduct health checks on their UC COVID check app every morning. Without a green pass, students would not be permitted to enter any buildings on campus. University of Pennsylvania, New York University, Yale University, the University of Arizona, and others have used similar programs. Oakland University took it further, announcing in July 2020 the Bio Button, which is a small device worn on the chest to track COVID symptoms. That would have been required for all residents until nearly 2,500 students signed a petition and pressured the school to backtrack on its decision. The University of Miami hired 75 student ambassadors to influence peers to follow health guidelines on campus. That was announced in November 2020. Our colleges and universities are places of education, not surveillance. This is getting eerily close to what we see happen in totalitarian regimes all the time. Constitutional rights have been trampled on our college campuses for years, as if these schools aren't operating in the United States of America. But the truth is, rights such as freedom of speech and the right to privacy, they don't end at the school gate. And what we're seeing happen right now is that this trend of tracking people's symptoms and people's speech, it's becoming more and more popular off campus, with big tech companies censoring offensive posts and also companies requiring their employees to download apps that track their symptoms. And this is because we at Campus Reform recognize that these radical ideas, they have a tendency to start on college campuses and then move into modern society once it's successful. Universities should not be giving students the ability to snitch on each other and they certainly shouldn't be encouraging it. There's already a sense of uneasiness on campus and I could definitely see this turning into something bigger where students start to turn each other in for reasons other than COVID guidelines or for offensive speech. The next generation of leaders is slowly becoming the next generation of snitches thanks to these policies. I'd also like to point out that these tactics, they're coming straight from the book 1984, where university administration is like Big Brother, which seeks to know everything and anything about a student's personal life. What was once a fictional novel is now coming to life right in front of our very eyes. And for our woke tweet of the week, a student at Central Michigan University is boasting on social media after he defaced his conservative classmates' chalk drawings. Anthony James, operating under the used name Brown Skin Queer on Twitter, declared on September 29th that he spent 45 minutes erasing, quote, copganda, racist, and pro-life from a sidewalk at Central Michigan University. Images provided to campus reform by the CMU College Republicans show their chalk displays crossed out and defaced with other slogans. A drawing of an American flag with the phrase back the blue was crossed out. BLM was written underneath. The vandal wrote eat above the phrase love them both. Likewise, the word life in the phrase pro-life is pro-woman was crossed out and choice was written in its place.
For universities that spend so much money on diversity and inclusion, you would think that its students would know how to deal with a diverse set of viewpoints. Keep in mind, this was chalk on a sidewalk. It's concerning that our college students don't even know how to tolerate chalk. What's going to happen when these students graduate from college and have to enter their real life and in the workplace where there will be people who have different viewpoints than they do? Those are all the top stories we have for you this week. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on another video. You can also follow along with all of the college craziness on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Campus Reform. We'll be back next week, as always, with another episode of the Campus Countdown. But for now, I'm Ophelia Jacobson. Thanks for watching.